Siena, medieval walls surround the most beautiful city in Tuscany. It is also proudly referred to as the Italian metropolis of the Gothic period. Throughout the centuries, historic squares, palaces and churches have created Siena's unique character. One of the city's landmarks is the dominant bell tower of the Palazzo Publico. The town hall boasts an outstanding collection of frescoes by the Siena masters. An 80 meter high palace tower rises up above the city's greatest square. Traditional buildings that date back to the Middle Ages and numerous romantic, picturesque features have turned the Piazza Il Campo into one of Italy's most beautiful squares. The Fonte Gaia, a fountain created from precious white marble, is a remarkable sculpture by Jacopo di Pietro. It dates back to the 15th century. The tower and inner courtyard of the palace-like city hall and Cortile del Podesta, which faces the fountain, are approximately a hundred years older. As in Rome, the She-Wolf is Siena's landmark. There are historical connections between the two cities. It is likely that during Etruscan and Roman times, a town or colony had already been established here. From the top of the bell tower, there is a unique view over the old rooftops of the city and Tuscany's wonderful landscape. The strong architectural influence of the city hall and the strict aesthetic rules for the campo are reflected in the layout of the Palazzo San Sedoni. Under the so-called Council of Nine, a town government that consisted of nine wealthy merchants, Siena experienced much prosperity at the beginning of the 14th century. Indeed, plans were being drawn up to complete the construction of the cathedral. After 1297, Giovanni Pisano had designed the lower Romanic part of the cathedral's façade. He also decorated the walls of the Santa Maria Cathedral with several sculptures. A hundred years later, the section above the splendid main portal was built by Giovanni di Cecco. Thus, it has a unique Gothic character of its own. The cathedral's fine exterior is only surpassed by its remarkable interior. Because of its outstanding decor, 
Today, the building serves both as a church as well as a museum. Most of the elaborate marble flooring is very precious. Thus, only during special ceremonies or religious events is the cathedral open to the public. This hexagonal majestic cupola is one of many outstanding sites and artworks within the Santa Maria Cathedral. The entrance to the baptism chapel, the baptisterium, is located at the rear of the building. Here the facade is also richly decorated. During the first half of the 14th century, the increasing wealth of the citizens of Siena gave rise to various ambitious projects. They decided to build a new cathedral. The building was meant to surpass the existing church in both size and beauty. However, plague came to the town and the money ran out. Although the interruption of construction work in 1348 called an end to hopes for a new cathedral. In subsequent centuries, the old church was constantly improved. The decreasing wealth of the merchants weakened the former influential position of the city. Finally, in 1555, Siena came under the direct control of Florence. As soon as Siena became part of the great dukedom of Tuscany, its proud citizens remembered their old traditions, which they have successfully preserved to the present day. The love of their Contrade, of which there are 17 districts, is as strong today as the observation of their time-honoured religious and civil customs. Thus, each year the horse race and funfair of Palio attracts thousands of visitors and fills the city's alleys with memories of an historic republic. Siena, city of art, overflows with history, charm and a lively medieval atmosphere where Italian Gothic style is very much alive.